In a previous video, we talked about the three states of matter and explained what happens on a particle scale. We talked about vibrating particles of solids that evolved into liquids when they gained the ability to rotate and translate. Eventually, these rotating, translating, and vibrating particles gain so much speed from increased temperature, creating a lot of distance and turning into a gaseous form. Let's graph the process of changing states on a diagram, where we will have the temperature on the y-axis in Celsius degrees and the amount of energy added from a flame, for example, on the x-axis. This is a qualitative graph, so the exact units of energy added isn't that important or to scale. If you start with ice at negative 50 degrees Celsius, you can expect its temperature to increase as you add energy from the flame. When the ice reaches 0 degrees Celsius, it starts to melt, but something weird starts to happen in the graph. As you add more energy, the temperature stalls for a bit and creates this flat line. This is because when a solid is melting, it's actually in a transitional solid-liquid state. And you can physically see that some of the ice is melting before the other parts. In this transition state, the temperature is constant. This means that adding more energy won't raise the temperature. It will just keep converting ice from 0 degrees into water at 0 degrees. This is what is known as the heat of melting. Water will only start to increase its temperature above 0 degrees once all of the ice has melted. This same process happens when water boils. At 100 degrees Celsius, liquid water is beginning its transition to a gas, so it's using the heat energy from the flame to transition states at a constant temperature of 100 degrees. This is known as the heat of vaporization. When all the water is turned into a gaseous steam at 100 degrees Celsius, then it can begin gaining temperature again. This entire process is reversible too. If we have steam at 100 degrees Celsius, it has to release energy by condensing first, turning into liquid water at 100 degrees. This is known as the heat of condensation. The value of the heat of condensation is the exact same as the heat of vaporization, except with a negative value, because you are removing energy from the gas to form a liquid. And you probably already guessed it, but the process of freezing liquid water into ice follows the same pattern. Liquid water has to release the heat of solidification, which is a negative counterpart of the heat of melting. This example was for the three states of H2O, which are ice, liquid water, and steam. Other materials and chemicals behave similarly, but have unique heat of melting, vaporization, condensation, and solidification values, as well as different melting and boiling temperatures. So to generalize this graph, I'm going to replace 0 Celsius into T sub melt and 100 Celsius with T sub boil. The key takeaway from this chart is that transitioning states is a constant temperature process. The energy absorbed or released for transitioning states is called latent heat, and the energy absorbed or released to change temperature is called sensible heat. This triangular diagram shows us the three states and their heat releasing or absorbing processes when transitioning states. As an added bonus, there are certain scenarios where solids can turn directly into gases without becoming a liquid first. This is known as sublimation. For example, it can be seen artificially when you remove dry ice from a freezer and you see the fog-like vapors. That's actually solid carbon dioxide directly turning into a gas. The heat of sublimation is equal to the summation of both the heat of vaporization and of melting, and its counterpart is the heat of deposition. Deposition can also happen when frost develops on the ground from air without turning into a liquid first. This video should have given you a solid understanding of the processes involved in the transition of states of matter. You should be able to explain why there are flat lines for both the solid liquid and liquid gas transition states. You should also be able to distinguish the difference between latent heat and sensible heat.